All right, hi everyone. We're back with more Siberia. We are now at the refuge uh, to go identify the bodies that were discovered uh, in Devil's Pass. First, we're going to explore the common room a little bit because that seems to be a secondary mission. Then we can go out and start the generator and go see the bodies. So maybe we'll get some answers and closure this time. <laughs> That bloody storm. Demoiselle Lenny had tea with someone. Maybe with that alpinist guy. Yeah, the one standing by the stove. Another one of those cigars. A photo of Leon on a ship. Must have been taken during his return from Baltayar. But I still can't figure out how he survived the winter while he was on the run over there. Lenny also had that newspaper clipping about Leon. <sighs> Looks like the old girls built a veritable shrine to him. Yeah, there's multiple women that are like crushing over this dude and I don't get it at all. There's something truly odd going on with Demoiselle Lenny. I really ought to have a little chat with her. But before, the bodies, they are all that count right now. Too small for a door. Now he probably survived with the Yetis up in the mountains. They must have carried Demoiselle Lenny to her room after she collapsed. They must have carried Demoiselle Lenny to her room after she collapsed. Like I can change its shape. Okay. We'll obviously be needing that. Maybe to start the generator. No time to explore the refuge again. I need to find the frozen bodies. All right, let's go get the fuel that I told you to bring up the first time. I don't think it's cold enough for fuel to freeze, but maybe someone should store it inside, just in case. What? I thought we needed fuel. I figured it would have been the other key, but... Ugh, dry biscuits. Wonder how long they've been there. Must be to crank up the generator. Okay. Ah, nothing. <sighs> Speak to me, Oscar! This button must have talked. The gas tank's empty. I better find some fuel so I can turn on the generator. Didn't you come across a jerry can earlier? Better go check it out. Yes! Thanks, Oscar! Yeah, don't know crap. I mean, twice I've tried to get you to bring the fuel up. Looks like this one's full. Uh, 
someone's watching me. That's a bit sinister. Hey, Oscar, what's the definition of sinister? Probably the lever. There we go. Forensics Institute of Bog. Uh, no, come on. Oh, it's those janky controls again. That's not Dana in this body bag. White man, brown hair, about 50 years of age. There is every reason to believe that this is the body of Harold Exner. Exter was to be ex exfiltrated by Leon Kobatis, whose remains were also thought to be among the frozen bodies during a resistance operation. The party was probably swept away by an avalanche in the mid-1940s. Uh-oh. Leon. It's as if he died yesterday. Like, like, like in those stories where people are found perfectly preserved in ice for decades after being carried away by an avalanche. <sighs> Hard to believe he's been dead for over 60 years. That's quite amazing. And grim at the same time. Okay, if you say so. I don't see how he looks like Leon, but... White man, around 30, fair hair... Body is in an exceptional state of preservation after being trapped in ice for so many decades. Probably died in an avalanche in the mid 1940s. Everything indicates that this body is of an alpinist and resistance fighter, Leon Kobatis, reported missing during a delicate exfiltration operation. His body should be confirmed by further analysis and visual identification expected to take place soon. Uh -oh. An unidentified blonde woman in her 40s. That can't be Dana. No, she was not blonde. White female, blonde hair with blue eyes, between 40 and 50 years of age. Definitely not Donna. Due to lack of evidence, her identity is impossible to determine with centrifuge. However, given the presumed identity of the two other bodies found in the ice, there is every reason to believe that this person participated in the resistance operation that was probably swept, swept away by the avalanche in the mid-1940s. We're not going to look at her. That's okay. it, Oscar. Dana's body is not among those found with Leon's. Oh, what a relief. Now that that's cleared up, Kate Walker, maybe we should take shelter within somewhat more solid premises. Right. We should go and check on Demos Eleni in the refuge. I have a lot of new questions for her. Looks like the rescuers left in a hurry after they moved the bodies here. Must have been surprised by the blizzard. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Leon dying. That just sucks. Really sucks. And that's the body's been misidentified. All Kate's ever seen is photos. 
Yunta really needs to come and take a look. There uh, he is. Hello? Sir? Are you sure you want to follow that that individual, Kate Walker? I yes. don't think he looked threatening. Rather the opposite, Oscar. Sir? It's the go run. Are you there? They it, the Yeti. What have we got here? Oh, it looks like a man. And then the go run, maybe? This portrait, it looks like Leon. The style reminds me of that other portrait of him that he described in his letter from Baltayar. The one made by the... Walker. Kate Walker. Yes. And you are... You're the one that Leon saved during the Origin Expedition a long time ago, aren't you? Yes. The Goran from Baltayar. Well, you've come a long way, Mr... Ludwig. Ludwig Hartag. Well, Mr. Ludwig, if you don't mind my asking, what happened when you and Leon returned to Ostertal to join the Resistance fighters? And how did you meet Dana? And he smokes, really? Leon, my brother. These drawings. They're moments from your life, aren't they? Hmm. Is that when you met Dana? No. Okay. That little figure there. That's you, isn't it? When you were a child in Baltayar. Yes. And the two adults there? Are they your parents? Uh huh. Looks like a river. And that little figure looks wounded. Is that you when you met Leon and the scientist from the Origin Expedition? Yes. Wow, he has a way for words. That person in the middle of the others was in the other paintings. That's Leon, isn't it? Yes. Leon. That group, is it your tribe, 
Mr. Ludwig? Yeah. So you all live together in a cave in Baltayar? Right. So you and your tribe took Leon in after the death of Reinhard Berger in 1937. That's how he was able to survive the winter in the mountains. That's what I figured. He was living with the Yeti. Then you went with Leon when he decided to return to Wagen to join the resistance fighters? Mm hmm These combat scenes, are they of the liberation of Wagen? Before, during resistance, Had Dana already joined the resistance operation by that time? I mean, by the time shown in the drawing. No, later. The blonde girl with you and Leon can't be Lenny, right? Yes, Lenny, my sister. I knew Lenny was a resistance fighter, but she never told me she fought alongside Leon, let alone you. Yeah, Lenny was keeping a lot of secrets. She even went as far as saying that she never saw Leon again after 1937. When they all met at the refuge with Dana. Why would she hide something so important? Time to check on Lenny. Come, Kate Walker. Come on. This Time sketchbook. To get I think it was Leon's. Oh, there we go. Not bad. It's a cool little souvenir. Ten thousand marks. Reward for information leading to the capture, dead or alive, of one of Ludwig Hartack, better known as the Mountain Murderer. Wanted for murder, dead or alive. He is part of the worst band of rogue vagans has ever known. This symbol looks like a warning. A handprint is a warning? Some kind of map looks like the Devil Pass to me. Could, could all those marks indicate where the Goran searched for Leon's body? So he's been searching all these years. Detonating wire, just like in the old movies. Okay. So someone has been playing with explosives. Okay. I think that's it. Now, where was Lenny's room? It's locked.
Ah, Fräulein. I knew you would be back eventually. Oh yeah, I'm back. You got questions that need to be answered. Judging by your face, you and Ludwig already met. We have. And it raised a lot of questions about you. About what you said to me the first time we met, and about what you didn't say. Of course. You can run from your past, but never truly escape it. <laughs> but you already know that. Don't you, Fräulein? Now, what are you hiding? I want to understand Demoiselle Lenny. I'd like to understand why you didn't tell me about Leon's death, about fighting with him in the Resistance, and about the Gore, and about Mr. Ludwig. It would have saved us both so much time and effort. Because it would have only begged questions. Questions which lead to events that I've never spoken about to anyone. Not even to you, dear Ludwig. Lene. Still, I suppose it... It doesn't matter now. Perhaps it's time I confess my crime. What are you talking no, about? She it was the him? best years of my life. Joining the resistance, unlike my coward of a father, and fighting alongside Leon after he miraculously got back from Baltayar with Ludwig. It gave me purpose. What did she do? Did she cause the avalanche that killed Leon just to keep him away from Donna? Leon was a terrific leader. I could feel he was finally taking me seriously, especially with Donna being missing. I knew he was still in love. After all, didn't he cross the globe to rescue her? But we all thought he arrived too late that Dana had died with her parents during the pogroms. So, I believed his mourning would eventually come to an end. And that's when Dana fell from the sky, literally. Dana was sent by London, right? To oversee that operation led by your resistance network? The exfiltration of a civilian to Switzerland, if I recall correctly. Indeed. But Leon never told us that Dana was involved. Maybe he was afraid to believe it himself. Did she not recognize him? I mean, surely she would recognize him from the back. you two go get a room let's move on you should have seen them Fräulein it was as if they had never left each other 
Do you know if, if Dana ever mentioned a child? Maybe they were planning to have one in Baltaya. Who knows? In Baltayar? Yes. That's all they ever talked about. How they were going to live over there after the war, along with Ludwig and his tribe. but it was to be just another broken dream. All right, so what's gonna happen? Right. I should call London now. My radio's downstairs. Leon's drawing book. Okay. Herr Gustav housed me here when I worked at the refuge. I have so many fond memories with Leon here. When I left for London with Junta, I never thought I'd see the place again, let alone be here again with Leon. Now it's a resistance headquarters type hideout. The Goran's lair. His lair? You really think of him as a monster? I figure you'd be a little bit more open minded than that. Oh, you can interact with that. Lenny's old room. I should stay away. Judging by these installations, Leon's network seems particularly well organized. Pity the same can't be said for all the resistance networks the Foreign Office deals with. May I? Two brothers and sisters in arms. You can sense that the three of them stand together as one. Lenny and the Gorun seem close. It's nice that she's found a friend. Not that Herr Gustav lacked affection for her, but she spent too much time alone in that refuge. The Gorun described Leon as his brother. They must have shared lots of adventures together since Leon saved him from the clutches of Herberger. Your drawings are beautiful. For you, Dana Rose. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ludwig. It's almost as if you were there with us that night. He probably was. Leon told me. Did he speak about me? All the time. I should go now. Talk to you later, Mr. Ludwig. Mm -hmm. So how much oh, time it is looks it? like Leon and me in this drawing. The Goron must have drawn it from Leon's accounts of us. Okay, I just assumed you've been here a couple of days. And he was just spying and... Okay. Looks like the Goron must be a nightmare for the Brown Shadow. He must be the super resistant I heard so much about in London. If this propaganda against the resistance fighters is anything to go by, the Brown Shadow must be pretty desperate. Harold Exner. A scientist with vital information for the war effort, according to the Foreign Office. 
His cover has recently been blown, which has led to this operation. Better not say anything during the briefing, but apparently Exner has a reputation for being rather hot-headed. He does look like the type that would be quite quick to anger. The refuge. The place where it all began between me and Leon. An arms stash. Since the departure of Herr Gustav, resistance fighters have been using this place as an outpost. The Allies are unable to send enough supplies to the resistance fighters for them to completely let go of their good old-fashioned methods. Is that it to look at? Just a weapon stash? Hmm. Shouldn't think the Brown Shadow appreciate Leon and his group throwing their own grenades at them. Okay, is there anyone else to talk to? Whoops. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to do that just yet. Why did Herr Gustav leave the refuge? Did the Brown Shadow force him? I can't go around this way. There's everyone hanging around outside. Seriously? You can't talk to him? All right, and there's Lenny, Lenny. upset. What do you want? It's amazing how you've grown. How have you been since last time? Fine, I guess. Well, she's had a crush on Leon ever since she was a kid. Now as an adult, she thinks she can have him. I found out that the refuge was closed down by the Brown Shadow a few years ago. Turns out your network did the best of it. But what about Herr Gustav? Is he... Dead? No, he's not dead. Although, for me, he might just as well be. You did not answer the question. It's quite incredible when I think of you and Leon fighting alongside someone who comes from so far away. Yeah. After Leon saved him during the expedition in Baltayar, Mr. Ludwig's tribe took him in during the winter months. They became inseparable, like brothers. So much so that Mr. Ludwig insisted on coming back here with Leon. Now he's our most ferocious fighter, the terror of the brown shadow. See you later, Lenny. Have you called London yet? Uh, Is everything all right, Herr Exner? You seem a little upset. If it's about your exfiltration tomorrow, I can assure you there's nothing to be worried about. Leon is the best for- I couldn't care less about tomorrow. So what is it then? It's my wife, Andrea. It's like I said to your, your goons there. I can't leave without her. Your wife? I'm sorry, Herr X now, but we have no orders regarding- I don't care about your orders. I'm not leaving without Andrea. Do you hear me? I won't. You think I'm a bastard, don't you? A selfish bastard ready to risk people's lives to recover the woman he loves. That's what you all think, isn't it? Yeah. I'm afraid I don't know you well enough to have an opinion of you. Besides, Very I'm only diplomatic. here to accomplish my mission, not to judge anyone. 
I take full responsibility for my actions, and I expect no pity in return. But would a little understanding be too much to ask? I mean, what would you do in my shoes? Hmm? What would you do if they asked you to abandon that alpinist you seem to be so fond of for the common good, eh? Because that's what you're asking me to do with Andrea. No, you'd probably do the same. Well, to be perfectly honest, I suppose if I were in your shoes, I would pull out all the stops to protect those who are dear to me. I see. Thank you, Fraulein. Well, everyone seems all right, more or less. I should get back to the radio now. Yeah, well, HQ is not probably not going to let you go on some mission to save his wife. This part of the radio is used to receive messages. I need my documents so I can find the right setting. They're in a side pocket of my bag. Empty. Okay, maybe the other pocket. I don't know, there's going to be some cipher. Please follow the procedure below to contact your liaison officer. To obtain the safety frequency, decipher the contact code below. Okay. Two one 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 two one two one two one. Set the resulting safety frequency on the receiver part of your device. Your liaison officer will then communicate on the receiver part of your device, a new transmission frequency to decipher. Set this new transmission frequency on the sender part of your device. Use the handset of your device to reach your liaison officer. Top secret, in order to send a message using the radio, please use the correspondent table below. The recipient of the letter will receive the code at the frequency established by the contact code. One, two, three, four, five. Huh. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifteen. Any of these numbers total up to fifteen. Six, nine, ten. Barn. They gave me all those twos and ones. When you add them all together, it equals 15. And the only two numbers I see here you added together is barn. Which is six and nine. Two, one, eight. Oh, I think that is that's correct. No. Wait, yeah. Cause if two's a dash, 
the dot 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 is a one so the two one 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 would be a B then the one two would be an A one two one supposed to be R be a dot dash dot then N would be a dash dot yeah okay This part of the radio is used to transmit messages. And so, okay. So a six and a nine, I just need to set one to six, one to nine. Okay, set the resulting safety frequency on the receiver. Quite understanding that. Yeah. Well, it's already set to a six. Unless I need to go to a nine. This part of the radio is used to receive messages. Okay, this part is not making any sense to me. Am I just not on the right track? That's what I was looking for. I was like, how do I talk? That item doesn't work. Maybe Herr Gustav's homemade radio is still around here somewhere. What? Maybe Herr Gustav's homemade radio is still around here somewhere. Uh, okay. This is a bit confusing. I'll have to find something that will enable me to improve the signal so I can communicate with London. Okay, so I do need to look around. Made it back from Wagen, despite the brown shadows tightening of the curfew. The hardest part of telling Franz's parents their son had been killed in the last operation. Their father was especially cut up when I told him he couldn't recover his son's body. I tried to explain that hard text buries, buries all are forgotten in the internal snow, like a frozen cemetery. So they become at one with the mountain and rest in peace beside the fallen brothers in arms where there's no risk of the brown shadow ever finding them and desecrating their graves. Anyway, even though they knew Franz knew of the risks, it didn't make it any easier for them to accept his death. 
I tried to reason with their father and he finally resigned himself to just asking for Franz's effects. I don't see why we would why we would refuse, but I've never been asked this before. So what do you think? Do you think Leon would mind? Huh. Okay. Personal effects in a heap. Can't be a good sign. Okay, that seems to be it. And they barricaded that room, which is strange. Okay, let's see. Pickled stuff and rations. Don't see no radio. What a mess. Herr Gustav must have turned Junta's dark room into a storeroom after she left. So Junta never did come back to retrieve it? Not surprising, really, I suppose, given the fact that World War broke out. I think that was expensive to make, too. That's an expensive piece to leave behind. Herr Gustav's old radio. I remember we spent many an evening listening to serials when I worked here that summer. This is the transmitter Herr Gustav told me he'd cobbled together to compensate for the wave disturbance caused by the mountains. Should be able to use it for my own radio to contact London. Once this antenna is connected, there must be a way to open it. There must be something else I can plug into it. There must be something else I can plug into it. Okay. Whoops. There must be something else I can plug into it. Once this antenna is connected, there must be a way to open it. Okay. I mean, I think all four probes need to be sticking out of it. Yunta Stash. I doubt I'll find anything of use there to amplify the radio signal. Well, I think we've got everything that we need. It's just trying to figure out what do I set the dials to. Why does music only play at this spot? That should boost the signal. Perfect. Seem to be moving. Nope. No doubt this should boost the signal. Okay. That is now on. That still does not move. Impossible. Oh, okay. The signal is strong enough to reach London now. I did not know it was do that. 
I need to adjust the frequency settings properly to contact London. Let's try moving this one to six. And then we'll move the other one to nine. All right, I mean, that one to nine, the other one to six. I need to adjust the frequency settings properly to contact London. Okay. This is where I'm struggling. In order to send a message using the radio, please use the correspondence table below. What the 218 stand for? Two one eight, which would be ten eleven. Any of these numbers add up to eleven by chance? does wef maybe I'm not right at all and I'm just way off in left field I mean, that spells barn. On the receiver part of your device. is six and nine. Maybe six point nine? Okay, so it's dot, dash, dash, dot, dot, dash, dash, dot is a P, and then dot, dot, dash is a U, and then dash, dot, dash. Okay, pop. Was Puck one of the words?
No, I'm not seeing that. Dot, dot, dash. That's P U K. This puzzle is making no sense. I'm trying to see if I can cheese it and just select something. I don't think so. I'm going to go back 6.5. I need to adjust the frequency settings properly to contact London. The dot, dash, dash, dot. It's an A M U Okay, let's start this over one more time. Dot, dash, dash, dot, and then break, dot. P, P, E, A, K, peak. So it's peak. Okay, that was one of the words. Peak is 8-4. Oops. Okay, that should do it. Fantastic. London, come in. London, do you read me? Over. We've made contact. Package safe and sound. I repeat, we've made contact. Package... Out of the question! I'm not moving from here without her! London, please wait a moment. Over. What's going on? You! Tell London I'm not leaving without my wife! Herr Exner, listen, I... No, you listen. Andrea is my closest collaborator. With regard to the Allied war effort, she is just as important as me. She is in Wagen, as I speak, hiding at some friend's place under a false identity. You must bring her here and smuggle her into Switzerland with me. There's no way we're going back to Vargen. Brown Shadow troops have overrun the entire town. We can't risk delaying our departure. A storm coming. Danger. I'm not moving from here without her. London, did you hear that? Roger that. Over and out.
They say we can't allow Frau Exner to be captured and risk her letting the cat out of the bag. What are you waiting for then? Send someone to fetch her. Hang on. You're not asking me to. Sorry, Lenny, we haven't got a choice. Ludwig can't go about in public in Wagen, and I have to prepare everything to get them through Devil's Pass tomorrow. You're the only one I trust enough to... Why can't she go? Lenny's right. I'm not known to the Brown Shadow. I can sneak into Wagen Incognito this evening and be back in time for... Out of the question! That's not your mission here. And besides... And besides... Yeah, he doesn't want to lose too dangerous. You. Leon! No. Willing to risk Lenny, but not Donna. All right, then. I'll go. Lenny, wait! Leon's reaction and his unconditional love for Dana drove me mad with rage. Yep. So I decided to take my revenge by making a detour. It was a detour I would regret for the rest of my life. What kind of detour? What were you going to do? You're going to go to the brown shadow and rat him out? you do? I made a deal with the devil. Wow, how petty. No one was supposed to have gotten hurt, I promise. I promise, Fraulein. What did you think was going to happen? I just didn't want Leon to leave me forever. To leave with her. Stupid, ignorant. But it was a fool's bargain. As I should have known from the beginning. Or you should have known. Trouble you caused. <laughs> All because you just could not let Leon go. Now you're possibly going to get yourself killed. But how could they have... We must leave immediately before the mountain becomes impassable. Go through the pass in this weather? Are you mad? We have no choice, Lenny. It's that 
will fall into the hands of the brown shadow. And we both know what that means. We ought to stay to buy Leon as much time as we can. Leon, I... She's right, Lenny. Now go! Go! Come! Ganna! No, don't make this harder than it is. Ganna! I love you, Leon. I love you too, Dana, more than anything in the world. Come on, let's go! So is that how she's injured? And why she's now in a wheelchair? Ironic, you this. isn't it? But the worst was yet to come. But you brought it upon yourself. We fought enough for Leon to lead the civilians to the foot of Devil's Earth. You're outnumbered. <laughs> I'll need to retreat. I'll need to get out of there. And he kept it a secret all these years that she was the one who tr betrayed them, turned them into the brown shadow. There's no way they could have made it all the way there in that short amount of time. That's a long distance to travel. God, I do not like that Lenny woman. I didn't like her from the very get-go. Now I really don't like her. Ludwig has been searching for Leon's remains since then. But it took the thaw, due to global warming, to uncover the bodies. And with them, my crime. Precisely when you decided to show up, Fraulein. Lenny. Dear Ludwig, can you ever <sighs> for 
<clears throat> Mr. Ludwig, please. Don't, Fräulein. I deserve this. Let's get this over with, Fräulein. Let me tell you about the last time I ever saw Dana, and then I'll be done. Okay, I'm listening. It was a year after Leon died, just after the liberation of Vargen. So the war is finally over. And now she returns home to find out what's happened. I'm surprised the musical orchestra is still standing. It wasn't destroyed during the war. The academy is still standing. All right, I'm gonna pick it up next time. We'll find out what happens at the end of the war. Thanks for watching.